Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly and welcome to the second part of building a weather app in SwiftUI using MVVM. The link to the first part would be available in the YouTube description. Now in the first part, we implemented our weather service, which is going to go all the way to the Open Weather Map API and going to get the model, which is the weather model, and finally going to populate the weather view model, which eventually gets displayed on our content view. So if I go ahead and run the app right now, it is hard coded to Houston and it is displaying you the weather information in Kelvin format, not Fahrenheit or Celsius, but Kelvin. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that people will be able to search different cities. That's the first thing, right? Okay, so how can we achieve that? Well, in order for a person to enter a city name, they need some sort of a text field. So let's go ahead and add a text field. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this text right over here into a VStack. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and introduce a text field. So text field. And you can see that you need to provide the title for the text field. So I can simply say search maybe, or city name, or enter city name, whatever you want to say. And then for the text over here, uh, you have to provide some sort of a bindable expression. Now this bindable expression can be part of the weather view model property. So I can go over here and I can create a property and we can do it that way. Or it can be part of the content view. So I can go over here and create private var city which will be string and which will be initialized to an empty string. And I can go ahead and put city over here. This means that every time I type something in, in the text field, so every time I type something in the text field, oops, it is going to populate the city variable that I have on line number 14, which is great because I don't have to do all of that. It's automatically going to be done using binding. So there we go, we have our text field. Let's go ahead and change the style of the text field also. I'm going to say text field style to be rounded text field style so we can at least see the text field a bit. And for the vertical stack, I'm just going to add a little bit of padding, the default padding too. And since it's a vertical stack, I can put a spacer to push everything on the top. So there we go, on the top. And for the text, I'm going to push everything on the bottom, which is the actual text being displayed. There you have it. Now, if we are allowing the user to type in the name of the city, then there is a point of having zero displayed over here. Well, there's not even a point doing the call for the fetch weather because we are only going to do the call to the fetch weather when the person clicks on the return key on their keyboard. So let's go ahead and remove the on appear now because we don't really want to get the call handled right now. Okay, so this is fine. We have our temperature, which is right now zero. Uh, one of the other things that we need to find out is how do we access the return? Like when I press the return in a keyboard in a text field, how can I handle that kind of an event? So if you go ahead and again type in text field and look at the different kind of uh, overload functions, then you will see that one of them is the text by editing change and this is the one that consists of something called on commit right at the end. So let's go ahead and fill this out again. I'm going to go over here and say search. The binding expression will be the same so it will be city. Editing change is going to get fired whenever you are typing something in a text field. Uh, right now I don't really care that much about this so I'm just going to leave it blank and ignore the first argument which is of type boolean. The last one is the one on commit, which fires whenever the person is done typing in the text field and they press the return key. So this is the one where we have to do something. So let's go ahead and implement this function. Oops, there we go. There we go. So this is the function that's going to get fired. I'm going to remove the last one over here. Take the text field style and remove the other text field that I created. There we go. So this is where we can perform a fetch request or a fetch weather 
using the city name. This is where we can do all of that stuff. Now the fetching of the city name is done by the weather view model. So if you go to the weather view model, we have a function called fetch weather, but it doesn't really take in anything. So I'm going to go ahead and update this function and provide the city name. Now, once again, there is another way where you don't have to provide anything over here. And that is if you expose properties inside the weather view model. And if the person is typing, then you'll have to do something like this self dot weather view model dot city. So if there is a property in the weather view model, which is called city, it will automatically be updated. If you want to do that, you can also do that. This approach is a little bit different because this approach will allow you to actually pass in the weather. So you can test, if you're testing your code, you can test the fetch weather in the view model uh, without binding it to anything, all right? Okay, so let's go back to our weather view model. So now we're passing in the name of the city. And this means that whenever we call the weather service dot get weather, we also need to pass the name of the city to the weather or to the get weather function. If we check out the weather service, the weather service, we're not really passing in anything, as you can see. So let's go ahead and update that. I'm going to go ahead and allow the user to pass in the name of the city. And as soon as we make that change, we also have to update the code over here so that we can pass in the name of the city, which is simply city. Let's go ahead and build it so that we know that our code at least builds. Okay, great. Now we will go back to our weather service. So now we have the name of the city and we have a URL.URL .url for weather. But the URL for weather is hard coded to Houston. So maybe we should pass in the city name over here also. So maybe I should call it URL for weather for city for, and then we pass in the name of the city. Now, obviously there is no function called URL for weather for city. So we'll have to go and update our this particular extension function. I'm going to go and create that function. I'm going to ignore the argument label and we are going to be passing in the city. Once we have the city over here, we can replace it Q equals to the city. Because right now you can see the city is hard coded. So let's go ahead and replace that. City. Let's go ahead and build it. So now hopefully we'll get the URL where the city name is injected. All right, let's go back to our service. Service should work as expected, that's fine. Let's go back to our weather view model. That is also as expected, that should be okay. The final thing we need to do is to, we need to make sure that we're actually calling that particular function of the weather view model. So self.weatherviewmodel.fetchweather and now we can go ahead and pass in self.city, which is simply the name of the city that the person has actually typed in the text box. Okay, let's go ahead and resume it. And we will go ahead and play it and we'll type something over here. So let's say we type in Houston and I press enter. And there we go, it's 309 Kelvin. And if I go ahead and pass in Denver, is 305 Kelvin. So you can see that this is definitely working. Let's go ahead and pass in something else. Let's go ahead and pass in San Antonio. It's two words with a space in between. Hmm, so that didn't really work out. It's still stuck on Denver's weather. So that is not working out. So it means that any city that contain a space, New Mexico, or any place which contains a space is not really working correctly. All right, so we have to do something. So why is it not working? Well, it's not working because whenever we pass this information, it has to be escaped, meaning the URL has to be encoded. So let's go ahead and see how we can encode the URL. For encoding the URL, 
which means adding the person there. So basically, if you don't know about URL encoding, so basically what we're trying to do is, let's say the URL is equals to Q equals to San Antonio, but when we are actually passing what the URL should be, would be San percentage 20, which is right over here, which is the encoding of the space, and then Antonio, something like this. So this is not really happening right now. So we have to do URL encoding. How can we do URL encoding? Well, let's go to the extensions. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new extension on string. So I'm gonna go and call it string plus extensions. And the reason that we are building up a string extension is that we can reuse URL encoding later on, maybe in a different scenario. So I'm gonna go ahead and extend string. Great. And I'm going to go ahead and create a function called scape or escaped, whichever one you like to call it. It really depends, like you can call it encoded or escaped. It really depends on what you want to call it, all right? And over here, um, we are going to be escaping the string that we are performing on, and it is going to return us a kind of like a new string. Inside over here, we are going to say original string, which is self dot add person encoding. And in the person encoding, we are going to encode URL host allowed. Now this is going to return you the, not the string, but this is going to return you more prop, most probably some sort of a null, like a string of null. So you can either return the string of null over here if you want to, uh, and, or you can return, like unwrap this and you can return that part. So this is up to you that whatever you want to return. So if you want to return uh, the, this part, then we can simply say, go ahead and return like this. And if the scaping is successful, then we should be able to get the actual string. All right. Now let's go back to our weather view model. Right inside the fetch weather is where we are getting all of this information. All right, so we can go ahead and say guard let city equals to city dot escaped. You can see it's going to unwrap it. Else, well, if it doesn't really do that, then we can say the URL is wrong or not allowed or is invalid or something, or some sort of a personalized kind of an error that you can throw, okay? All right, and now we are passing in the city name and hopefully this city name is the encoded one. Let's go ahead and give it a try and let's see if that actually helps us getting the actual weather for places which contain a space in between. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. First of all, I'm gonna go ahead and say San Antonio and I'm gonna press return key and now you can see it's actually returning some sort of a weather. And if I go ahead and say Denver, that works, that is also good. We can also say Houston, that's working. And another escape one is the New Mexico, and that is also working. So we got a couple of them, and you can see that now they're working. Now, what happens if you type in a city that actually doesn't exist? So if I go ahead and type in something like this, which is a city which doesn't really exist, then it obviously doesn't really work. It doesn't really show anything. So this is some sort of a consideration that you'll have to take, that if you type in some completely bogus stuff, which doesn't make any sense, then what kind of a result that you want to display on the screen? All right, so right now what is happening is that if we place an invalid entry, like if we create a city name which basically doesn't exist, like some random garbage, then it goes and it calls the failure. Now inside the failure, we're simply printing out, well, error or something like that, but we can go ahead and create a message property or error message, which can be string. And we can also make this a published property. This means that every time we are going to assign this property, uh, then it means that you need to notify the subscribers, which in this case is the view and the view needs to update. So over here, we can go ahead and say self dot message equals to uh, whatever, unable to find the weather 
or things like that. So this is more of a very generic kind of an error that we are giving the user. And if we go to the content view, we can also go ahead and find a place to display this kind of information. So we have a text field, we have something over here. Um, it really depends where you want to display. I'm just going to display like right at the end. So text, and then I can say weather view model dot message. All right, let's go ahead and give it a try. I'm going to go ahead and run this. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and type in Houston so I can see the temperature, fine. And now if I go ahead and type something random stuff over here, you can see that it's saying unable to find the weather. Now obviously this is not still not 100% done because if it's saying unable to find the weather, then I shouldn't even see this weather, right? I mean, this also should be hidden. So let's see how we can accomplish that also. Okay, so the easiest way for us right now is to simply set weather, self.weather equals to nil. And by the way, I accidentally deleted the message property. Enable to find weather. All right, so that's the easiest way right now. We will change that later on because later on we might have some sort of a loading state to work with. But right now we are simply saying weather equals to nil, so it will reset it back to zero. It's not gonna remove it, it's just gonna reset it back to zero. The other thing that you have to make sure is that whenever you are setting any property that is marked with published, which in this case, you can see the message property, oh, it's very hard to take this whole, okay. So the message property, which is right here, is marked with publish and the weather property is also marked with publish. So, and we are setting it right over here. We have to make sure that you are doing it on the main thread. So dispatch queue dot main dot async and going to wrap this with that. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and build it. And let's go back to our content view and try to run this again. So this time I'm gonna start and I'm gonna go ahead and type in Houston and you can see the weather in Kelvin, that's fine. Now, if I type in a city name that doesn't really exist, it's just gonna reset it back to zero and it's gonna say unable to find weather, which is a little bit better, but not perfect, but a little bit better, right, from the last time. So this is fine for now. Uh, in the later videos, I'll show you that how you can create kind of like the loading state so that we can show the weather uh, if it is loaded or we can actually show some sort of a different view like a loading view, a success view or a fail view. So we are going to accomplish that in the future videos. So I hope you really like this and I know that some of you have been commenting on the video and uh, thank you so much uh, for your support and I know that you're enjoying the video, learning some new stuff and uh, we'll keep on learning and we will make sure that I will be introducing it some other stuff like loading state and conversion from Fahrenheit to Celsius and all of those cool things we're going to take step by step and introduce it later on. All right. If you like my video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have a lot of different courses on Udemy and I'm always working on new one. Check out my course if you want declarative interfaces for any Apple device. This is a 21 plus our course just on Surf UI. This is amazing, right? Uh, creating and combining views, building list and navigation. We're also going to dive into understanding MVVM design pattern. You're also going to learn about posting data and JSON integration, integration with core data and Surf UI. You're also going to learn about Surf UI 2.0, which just got released in June. So this is a lot of stuff that you are going to learn in this course. It's amazing course, 21 plus hours of course, and check it out. It has great ratings and close to, well, close to, I would say 4,600 students and always growing. So check it out. The best way to get this course is to check out the YouTube description. There are links to all of my courses. So if you already have this course, then maybe you'll be interested in server side Swift. Maybe you'll be interested in some other courses. I have a lot of different courses and I'm sure that you are going to enjoy all of them. You can check it out. Thank you so much and enjoy this video.